eternal Rain never ends He is my Father That's my life Won't be I'm 
Jehovah Jireh, you're my provider. Jehovah Nisi, oh Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom. There we go. Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated. Welcome to the last service of 2017. Hallelujah. Um, it's good to be in the house of God. It's good to be the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We get to, you know, the, the terminology in the Bible is used both ways. The church is the gathering of people, and it's also uh, the individual member of the body of Christ. Amen. So, uh, Praise the Lord. We're glad you're here. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas, and um, we haven't seen some of you all in a couple of weeks, so um, we know that you were busy. Travel. Some people were traveling. Uh, we had our last service the Wednesday night before Christmas, so um, first time we've been together since then, so we're glad to be back together. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we trust that everyone had a wonderful time together uh, with your family, and et cetera, and Siri got caught up talking about my, just listen to me, hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen, 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 and um, you know, I uh, we didn't get to see y'all uh, over the holiday, we uh, saw some of your Facebook posts, those that get on Facebook, some were traveling all over the place, others were doing what we were doing, nothing, we hung at the house, we didn't go anywhere, and um, we, didn't, we didn't go anywhere, when I say we didn't go anywhere, we didn't go anywhere, uh, uh, had um, a couple of runs to the grocery store or 
you know, go get something at Lowe's to uh, do around the house, but that was it. I'm not sure Janie's been out, but like once in two weeks. I, I, I couldn't coax her out one day to go with me shopping or something, you know, and uh, went out one night, like, I, forgot, I had to go get something on Christmas, on, on Saturday. When I, Nathan needed feeder stuff for his animals, crickets and stuff. The Target parking lot was like New York City at rush hour. I'm like, and these people are out here shopping for grocery, I mean, not for, for gifts. These people are cray-cray. I, w- I wouldn't, hey, I'm blinking. Yeah, it was blinking. I don't know why. Hallelujah. So um, we still have some out traveling, and, we're, you know, they let us know they're not going to be here today, but we're, we're really glad to see y'all and uh, bring bringing the end to 2017. And these, these are natural events. These aren't, you know, heavenly events. Amen. And so, you know, God, God's going to be the same God at midnight 1201 as he was at 1159. He doesn't change. Uh, although, you know, in the natural, you know, we, we count things, we time things. With things of the Spirit, they're always consistent. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, it's good to see, and we're going to receive the Sunday morning tithe and offering. Uh, if you know offering envelope, uh, raise your hand. If you're sending it with square cash or send it through PayPal, go ahead and ring that bad baby up. Hallelujah. And um, this is your last opportunity to give in the year. So if you want an extra... Uh, deduction. We don't we don't give for the deductions, but sure nice we get them. Isn't that right? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! You know it's. I mean it's better to give to the kingdom of God than give it to the government. Hallelujah! Just it just is. Hallelujah! And uh, I'm looking forward to how much tax cut I get because uh, the tax tax break came through. Don't, don't listen to anybody. You know, this one went to big business. No, it, went, it goes to the, a lot of the middle class. And people who don't pay taxes still won't pay taxes. You know? Hallelujah. So I, I, I'm all for not the government not having their hand in the kitty. Amen? Glory to God. I think, I think if, if, the, uh, if the church was allowed to be the church and, and people were able to just, you know, not give all the money to somebody else who's going to tell them what they're going to do with it and let the church be the church, we could get a lot more done. Hallelujah. And yeah, without the constraints, so praise the Lord. Well, we're glad you're with us, and let's go ahead and give. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the time and the offering. We thank you for the people blessed. We thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them, and you pour out blessings. They don't have room enough to receive. We call it we, them blessed, financially prosper. We thank you that as they obey the laws of prosperity from the word of God, that they walk in the full supply and overflow that you promise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go ahead and receive that, brother into the kingdom of God. Glory to God. And those of you joining us on Facebook today, we're glad to have you. I praise God forevermore. Everybody say praise God forevermore. And we're going to turn the little guys loose here in just a second. You got an announcement? All right. Before the little guys go, Jeff's got an announcement. I'm not going to tell you not to listen to your wife because that would. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, so praise the Lord. I just wanted to do a quick reminder to everyone that we, every Sunday morning, we are praying right next door in the little room right there. Uh, we're praying every morning, every Sunday morning, uh, approximately 1030 until service starts. And you are missing out if you are not there. Amen because we are storming the gates of hell amen and we are a, va- a prayer avail as much glory to god and we're not just we're not just praying to be praying we're praying like an a, a a person with a bow and arrow we're being specific glory to god and it this you don't really want to miss this because this we're we're praying for the service we're praying for the lost we're praying for our pastors and we're praying for you individually as well as your household and so you know that you know when the rubber meets the road 
you know, what good is it if everybody else is doing well and you still can't pay your bills? You still got sickness in your house. Amen. You know, we're praying. We're praying against all of that. Hallelujah. You know, we we praying in the spirit. So, you know, in the spirit, you know, the Bible say we speak mysteries. Glory to God. And there's also we're we're bridging the gap. Glory to God. How many how many of you know there are gaps that need to be filled in your life? Amen. We're praying for gaps to be filled. Glory to God. You know, with that money gap, you know, where you need you need an X, X amount to, to, to do what you need to do. Or you need you need uh, this amount of healing so you don't miss no work. Glory to God. We're, we're praying that the gap be filled. Glory to God. And so you don't want to miss this time. This is an awesome time. I'm so thankful and grateful for the prayer warriors that are that are consistently, continually coming out and praying and helping to lift lift up the name of Jesus. And, because, you know, there's a lot of work that we got to do here in the end times. And, you know, the Lord is dependent on you and I and using our prayers to bring those things to pass. Amen. Not only, uh, you know, as a as a local body, but as a universal body, you know, we are helping to usher in the coming of our Lord and Savior. We are helping to usher in, you know, the lost glory to God. The people is di- dying, hurting world out there and they need Jesus. Glory to God. And we are praying for them to come and hear the word of God so their lives can be changed and transformed. Amen. And Jesus said, you know, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one towards another. And how much more um, of an expression of love is there than to pray for someone you never even met before? Amen. So you say, oh, I love everybody. Well, will you come and pray? All right, everybody smile and look forward. Won't nobody know we're even talking about you? Everybody just look up, smile. Just, 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 just tell your face you're happy. Won't nobody know we talk about you. I ain't calling no names. I ain't pointing nobody out. I'm, I'm very particular about the fact that I ain't looked at nobody yet. Glory to God. Except my children over here. I can look at them. Amen. So we're not calling any names. And there's no condemnation. Glory to God. It's a good time to come and, you know, be bolstered in your faith. Amen. Glory to God. Set your week up right. Glory to God. So you have a victorious week. Amen. You know them devils waiting for you on the job when you get there on Monday morning. You need to have something for them. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, you need to come in there in victory and power. Glory to God. Your supervisor get ready to start talking crazy. They see that Holy Ghost. They say, well, mm, never mind. Hallelujah. You want to be in power. Glory to God. When you step on them jobs. Hallelujah. And last and finally, just remember, we're doing prayer about 1030 every morning, every Sunday morning. Glory to God. Come and be blessed. Amen. And this one is especially, I saw this especially is this is for a pastor um because we had talked and uh this is specifically for him they have put out their kickball uh sign up pastor because you know i had talked to you you know you know with your foot and everything i said well you know we believe in for your healing so you can play kickball and so the lord heard his cry he said lord i want to play kickball i'm not losing this foot i'm gonna kick it with this kickball and so we have, go, we have gone ahead and pulled this down for pastor. And I'm going to go ahead and hand this to him because we want him to be able to participate. Amen. W- with his good foot, both yeah. his good feet. Amen. Hallelujah. He gonna, he gonna, when, when, if Jesus Terry is coming, he's going to have both feet in the casket. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, don't worry. Don't everybody laugh at one time. It was all right. Praise God. I'm finished. God bless you. Yeah. I'm not ready to get in the casket yet either. Amen. Hallelujah. I went, went to the gas station one day and was down and asked some guy. I said, how you doing? He said, I'm on this side of the dirt. I said, yeah, but you can't enjoy being on this side of the dirt until you're ready to be on the other side of the dirt. I, he, he went, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I had to think about it. He, he got it after I said that, but hallelujah. All right. Praise God. So are you ready to be on the other side of the dirt so you can enjoy this side? Amen. Out of the, all right, Children's Church Preschool, thank you, Jeff. Um, while, while they're going out, don't forget, you know, uh, don't forget, I actually had the same thing. Um, we, we want to make sure that we um, are involved in more outside activities together. And so I would like some ideas from the congregation what you would like to be able to do. Would you like to take a group trip to the Biltmore? Would you like to go, you know, 
I don't know, hiking? Would you like to go? Oh, I mean, like during Christmas, we could have gotten people together and rode over to uh, Friendly and seen all the tree globes, you know, and uh, gone and gotten hot coffee somewhere besides Starbucks. You know, you can get, you get McDonald's coffee and enjoy it and not pay $7.50 for a cup of cheap, sorry, burn up coffee with a bunch of sugar in it. I'm picking on my kids right now. They, let, they just think Starbucks is the best thing since peanut butter and sliced bread. I'm like, cheap coffee, you can't taste it because you disguise it with all the other stuff. My daughter's over there going, <sighs> yeah, yeah I'm not, I'm, just give me a cup of uh, institutional coffee from somewhere. Yeah, some Maxwell House or something from Sambo's, if y'all remember Sambo's. Anybody, anybody remember Sambo's? I remember Sam, it was it was a diner, kind of like you know, uh, one of these old diners. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. All right, well, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to know some ideas and some things you wouldn't mind doing. Um, you know, we not we can't do it every week, every month, but you know, if we can do something maybe every quarter or whatever as a group, um, we'd like. We've gone to the zoo in the past. Um, you know, some of these things that you know, are family outings. You just go and, I mean, the kids love going to the zoo. You know, go through the zoo. Uh, it's fun. You know, going to the Biltmore is fun. It's expensive, but, you know, if we plan that out far enough, you know, everybody wants to get together, we, we go together and, you know, get in. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, I mean, I like the Biltmore. I like the grounds. I like going in the house. It's, it's a cool thing to do. And do what now? Fair one time, yeah. Uh, that was a treat. I remember that, that year Nathan was trying to hit the, the, the bottles and win something. He threw several times, never hit anything. I walked up there and grabbed it, hit two in a row. Boom, boom. I still got Balto at the home. You know, I got a big, big old Balto stuffed animal. I'm like, what do I do with this thing, you know? Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, well, let's go ahead. This is, this is the end of the year. And, uh, you know, uh, coming into the end of the year, we uh, trip traditionally people uh, come up with their New Year's resolutions. I mean, how many have not, how many in your life you've never made a New Year's re- resolution on, you know, coming into the beginning of the new year? You've, you know, most of I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to eat less. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And we all know they usually last about 30 seconds after midnight. <laughs> kind of like that time when you declare you're going to start a fast, you know, a week-long fast, and you go to church and somebody says, let's go out to the uh, Golden Corral today for lunch. And you're like, Lord, I'll start this afternoon. You know what I'm saying? Uh, usually, uh, you know, uh, just as soon as you, I'm going to go, I'm going on a fast to seek the Lord. And somebody that's never asked you to go to lunch in your life. <clears throat> and, and of course, here's a golden crowd with all you can eat thing, you know? The new one that just op- reopened. They tore it down and rebuilt it. You know, the brand spanking new one over there. You know, I hadn't been in there. I hadn't been in Golden Crowd in a long time, but, you know, they got that brand new one, you know? I uh, used to be good at Shoney's All You Could Eat Breakfast Buffet. Yeah. You know, me and Janie used to drive. We, we'd get to North Little Rock, Arkansas. We, there was a, a Shoney's. And we'd drive all night at about 6.30 in the morning. We'd pull in there, and I'd, I'd scar. I mean, because you, you could eat so much on one little price, you know, just, you know. But um, our New Year's resolutions many times are, you know, just ideas. They're just thoughts that we don't have a lifestyle to match. You know, we come out of Christmas, we've been eating turkey and ham and pies, pecan pies, and sweet uh, and, and uh, pumpkin pies and uh, carrot cake. Yeah, we made carrot cake a couple of days ago, and um, you know, uh, fudge and all that. And then, then New Year's you can wake up and you're gonna go and crash. You know, Atkins. I'm not going to see a car for the next 60 days, you know? And, and usually what these things are, they're just things we do that, that mentally make us feel better about, you know, the new year, okay? I'm going to be more disciplined with, you know, you know and, and we all know this. If you don't really change some stuff, you're not going to be any more disciplined next year than you were this year. If you don't make some serious adjustments and changes, you're not going to... Uh, be any more diligent about how you eat and what you eat than you were this past year. 
You're not going to be any more faithful about that exercising than you were in the last four years. This is the year. You know, this is the year. I'm really going to get in. Well, yeah. But I want, I want to kind of let's move this on the spiritual side this morning. Because oftentimes we, we, um, we get born again. We, we get excited about God. We get excited about the things of God. We get excited about um, being a Christian. You know, we hear a message and, and people uh, hear. And those of you watching on, on Facebook, many of you have come into this because of the teachings on, on faith. You know, uh, be, being able to believe God, being able to receive from God, having what you say, uh, these kind of things. And, you know, somewhere in the process, oftentimes we lose sight of those things. <clears throat> The things, you know, we lose sight of the vision of the church. We can all do that. I've done that. I've done it as a pastor. I've lost, you know, you, you get so caught up with what's going on, you lose, you lose sight and focus on why you're here, what you're here for, what you're supposed to be doing. You get so caught up with the micromanagement of life, we can't see the big picture anymore. You live the micro stuff. But you got you, you got to live through the micro stuff to get to the stuff to the to the vi the full the full vision of things, and so um, I want to talk to you this morning about rekindling things that God has in your heart, but not and you know we, we just can't do it as a a one time sermon we're going oh, we're going to rekindle the day and this is going to be this next year is going to be different than ever before. Because there has to be a change in what we do individually and corporately in order to move into the big picture. Amen? Amen? You don't just get up and come to church just because it's the thing to do. We come for a purpose. We gather for a purpose. Threefold cord is not easily broken. Iron sharpens iron, you know, write the vision, make it plain. The heat of reason may run with it. You know, we have, we have a vision, we have a purpose corporately, but individually you've got a purpose, you've got a destiny, you've got a dream. And many times, you know, because we go so long, I mean, listen, I'm going I'm to tell you, um, one of the greatest strategies of Satan is to try to defer your dream. And hope deferred makes the heart sick. Ah, I've been believing this, I've been believing this, I've been believing this, you know, and this just hadn't happened. Okay? And I want to I want to talk to you this morning about a couple things. Number one, use your dreams. You will never get answer to faith without a dream. Because see, your dream are really your hope. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. You can have the greatest faith on the planet and no hope, and you won't get anything done. Because you've got to have something to apply it to. Okay. Now, I know it's been two weeks. I am not a new I am not a new bone, and you are not a dog. Okay, I'm not a new, I'm not a new cow gate, and you're not a cow. That's the looks I'm getting right now. All right, but we have to have you have to have a dream. Psalm thirty seven four says, "Delight yourself also in the Lord; He shall give you the desires of your heart." Now we often use this to say that what you desire, God's going to give you. Let's come back to this other side of this. You delight yourself in the Lord, he will produce desires in your heart. Okay? Not just get, see, see, we get over on this, I can have what I say thing, he's going to give you the desires of your heart. Not if they're not godly. James makes that very clear. You have not because you ask not, or you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. What's lust? The Greek word for lust is, is really a word that means strong desire. And they can be godly. Or they can be ungodly. So here, 
if you're going to be in, in where you want to be or where you think God wants you to be, you're going to have to delight in the Lord. We can't get so busy about being a Christian, we forget why we're Christians. We can't be so busy about life and living out, you know, I got my confessions. You know, I'm great. I'm glad you got your confessions. I got Jermaine Copeland's book of confessions. I confess them every day. Great. But do you have a hope? Have you delighted in the Lord and spent time with him so that he's producing a desire in your heart that, that gives you vision, that gives you direction, places to apply your faith. Amen? And see, we can get so numb to the things of God. They seem like distant memories. Things that once burned in your heart. Now, you know, how many of you have ever had, how many do campfires? Now, we have a fire pit in our backyard when those things we bought from Lowe's, those big stones, just, you know, about that big around the middle. You can put firewood in it, about that tall. We go out there in the backyard and get it started, sit around there, you know, and then we get it going. Flames are up to here when we start. Boy, it's just burning, putting off the heat, just so pleasurable. And then if, and if you don't keep fueling it, it burns down to these little coals. And there's still heat there. I said there's still heat, but it's not a blaze. And usually it's me and Nathan hanging out at the end because the girls have all given up and gone in by now. You know, that was enough. We were there for the party, the big flames. You know, now it's down to the embers. They've had their hot dogs and their s'mores, and they're ready to go in. Amen. You know, and then you just you get lazier and lazier, and, you, you know, it's... it's Putting off something, and when it's really cold outside, and you do it. You know those little embers will keep keep your 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 knees warm. Okay, when it was really flaming up there last year, that's the reason I stopped having. Last year was my reason I stopped. Didn't have a real Christmas tree this year. We took our Christmas tree out there, set it in the fire pit, standing up, braced it, and lit it. Twenty feet away, you were getting you were getting too hot. I mean, it burnt like crazy. I mean, like, if that caught on fire in the house, it burnt through my second floor before I even do it happen. I mean, it was cray-cray. I'm like, I'm not having a, 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 another Christmas tree like that in my house again. Now, my, my next goal is to, you know, find real ones, that, like, which it's hard. I'm going to have to go find one, a Douglas fir up at the mountains that has the roots and set in the house to keep it watered during Christmas and then replant it at the end of the year or something because... I like the smell, but I don't like the idea that my house could just go. It was, I mean, I was like, you've got to be kidding. But see, it burned all, that, it burned all the, the, uh, the nuts off with all the, the resin in it, and then it just, big stick. You know, had to lay it over and get more fire in it and burn up each section until they burn it all up. You know? Uh, we start out oftentimes like that. It's not how you start in the fire unless you can stay in the fire. And there are things, I know this, I know that there are things God puts in our hearts that when they don't come to pass in a certain time frame, we begin to lose sight. We begin to lose hope. We begin to... We'll say it, and then we'll get to where we won't even say it. Because it's just not that, it's not on fire. It's a, what's the use? Or so much has happened. So many things have gone under the bridge. Why bother? But if we'll spend time in the presence of God. You spend time with him. Delight yourself in him. Return to the simplicity of your relationship with the Lord first. Don't make it complicated. Don't make it about getting a faith feat accomplished. 
Are you here? Yeah, I can still go to the Copeland meeting. Still go to, you know, to go out to Raymond, go to Winter Bible, or go to a camp meeting. I mean, you can still go and you know, be around other Christians who are just fired up about the things of God. But don't lose your personal, simplistic relationship with the Lord. Just go back to the basics of delighting yourself in Him. Just being with Him. Not trying to figure out what formula for faith is going to make this work and what, you know, what equation and how many steps to get into here and all that, you know, is going to make all this stuff happen in my life and how I can get supernatural debt cancellation. You know, I, I, I'm going to be, be debt-free tomorrow morning because I gave in the special offering to the, the, the money preacher. Thank you for your enthusiasm. And you did, it didn't happen, and you got, def- you got aggravated. Or one of your friends left the church. Okay? Pastors deal with this, you know. They're, they're going, all of a sudden comes, somebody comes in, their church blows up like, a, like the Titanic. <laughs> you know? Then people run up, then people leave and go over there. And you go, well, well, well they're, they, it's, they're happening over here. See, we get caught up with these externals in, in church uh, relationships. We get caught up with these externals in our personal relationship with the Lord. We can't afford that. There are things that are buried in your heart right now that God gave you. I said, there are things buried in your heart right now that God gave you. Because when you first came into the kingdom and you first came into the things of God, you delighted yourself with him. And he gave you desires. Those things were planted by God. They're God-given dreams. They're God-ordained dreams. Well, if they're God-given, they'll, have, they'll come to pass. Not if you don't cooperate. Yes, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, but there's a lot of people who didn't walk in them. And so we have, to, we have to get back to the simplest life of delighting ourselves in God. For him to impart dreams into us again. Or to fan the fires of the coals. There's more work. Get those things down, the embers in the, in the fire pit. You just got a bunch of red coals down there. And you throw some wood on there. And you notice it doesn't go woof. You got to get some bellows or get your, get your paper plate. <laughs> or if you're camping with like we do, we got one of those little battery-powered uh, air mattress blower uppers. <laughs> you cheat because it's less work. You know, just... But even if it's wet wood, it won't, it, it, it'll, it'll take it a while to dry out and catch on, catch on fire. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes when Satan has doused us with so much water, we're wet wood. We've got to dry out. We've got to get back into the flames of God once again so that we can begin to burn again with the fervency and desire to know him. Paul wrote to the church and said, there's only one thing I would know among you. That's Jesus Christ and him crucified. We lose what we, what we get. So, look, listen, I am a rhema, word of faith guy. I love Dad Hagen. Dad, and Dad Hagen didn't preach a lot of stuff that we believe. A lot of stuff that people say and a lot of people, stuff that people do. He didn't preach it that way. They didn't hear it. It wasn't about. It wasn't about having a message. I heard one preacher say this, and I, I've never, never. I mean, it's bothered me ever since. If Jesus wasn't Lord, if God wasn't real, if da 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 da, da I, I'd still live my faith because I know it works. And I, I, I just sat there and amazed. I'm like. Ah. Ah. 
because we took, we took him out of all of it. It's not a message. It's not the message of faith that produces dreams in your heart. It's intimacy with God. The message of faith is, one of the, is, is a mainline theme of the Word of God, but it is not God. It's a tool in the hands of the believer that God has and God's granted to the believer to use to walk out and to live the things he places in our hearts. To live a victorious life, because he wants us to live a victorious life. But he wants us to live a victorious life with him. God would walk in the cool of the day with Adam. He would come down and walk on the earth with Adam and have fellowship. Adam wouldn't stand around, I believe that I receive, I believe that I receive, I believe that I receive. While God was trying to walk with him. And don't get me wrong. I understand confession. I understand these are biblical principles. But we cannot separate them or elevate them above. You can't separate them from our relationship with God. And you can't elevate them above our relationship with God. They should be outgrowths of our relationship with God. They should be birthed out of our intimacy with God. Through his word, yes. But his word is what he has, de what he has declared, what he has said. He, he is in his word. As the word of God says, the word of God even proclaims that Jesus is the word, the logos, the complete discourse of God. Jesus was the living word. Amen. And so, if we're going to have something greater than a New Year's resolution that you'll forget about by next Sunday. Hello. Now, I hope I didn't mess up your New Year's resolutions. But you already know yourself that if you don't do something different, you're going to get your own New Year's resolution up. You wouldn't take Pastor Ed to mess that up. Amen? Hallelujah. In order to have a vision, you know, we, we always talk about have a vision. got to have a vision. you got to have hope first. You've got to have a dream. You've got to have a dream. You've got to believe beyond the failures and the, uh, the dream bigger than the circumstances that you don't like in life. Your dream has to be bigger. Okay? You can, you can confess, I'll never, I'll, I, you know, I'm going to have supernatural debt cancellation. I'm not going to have any financial problems ever again. You're foolish. Paul did not write to the church at Philippi and said, you guys will never slack again forever. He said, my God shall supply your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Which meant what? They were going to face need. But God had the answer. Put on the whole armor of God that you may withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, remain on the battlefield ready to do battle again. Why? Because you're going to face the evil day. See, we got to where we were confessing things that were outside of a relationship-based understanding. Dad Hagen used to say it all the time. He says some folks think they're going through life on flowery beds of ease. That the blessings of God are going to fall on them, fall on them like ripe cherries off a tree. And they're not going to have to do anything. That's some of the excess of grace narrative right now. You know, everything's just going to happen no matter what you do because you're under grace. It's so, it's so relationship void. God's just going to do it because God does it. And I am abdicated from any part. I don't have to be connected to it because it's just going to do it. Let me know how that works out for you. Hello. You know, 
It's like the prosperity preachers all run to each other's church and give each other a Rolex. They're sewing a Rolex, they get a Rolex back. You know, I don't get a better Rolex because I sewed this Rolex. We did some stuff, and God, God will wink at immaturity for a season. The problem is, most of the time, by the time it's all done, people are all messed up. You got to relearn. That's right. Everybody was inviting everybody to everybody's church, each other's church, and they would all take up big offerings for each other. Why don't you stay in your own church and take up an offer for yourself? Cheaper that way. You know? I never saw him give the Rolex to the guy on the back row who, who worked at Walmart on the, third, on the graveyard shift mopping floors. And he never got the Rolex. And so we, people, people begin to become disillusioned with their dreams because they're, they're, they're given this pie-in-the-sky scenario. Are you here? Now, um, the, the English guy who had the orphanage, I can't remember if it was Mueller. Mueller had the orphanage. And he started out, and he said after 25 years of running the orphanage, it took every. He started out with like five kids or something. And after twenty plus thirty years of, of running that orphanage, he said, "Today, I can believe God for a million dollars as easily as I could believe God for ten dollars thirty years ago." Something. This is kind of a little paraphrase. Not quite n- numbers on it, right on the button. But what he was saying was, it took him years to grow his faith of walking with God, being with God, developing it for the purposes of God and doing those things for his faith to get there. It, he didn't just wake up and say, I believe God for $1 million. I'm going to have all the money I need to run this 400-person orphanage. He couldn't even believe God for five. He's going to have 400. But he ended up with the 400. Did that be able to receive a million dollars? Couldn't do that in the beginning. See, that's, that comes as you grow with God. That doesn't come because you got a Rolex from another preacher. Nathan, Nathan's kind of gotten this thing lately of, of drinking Perrier because it's, it's, it's carbonated, but it's, it's calorie-free, you know. And with a twist of lime, and the, you know, the ones that got strawberry in them, they got lemon in them, they got, you know. Listen, back in the day when, when all the Word of Faith people were drinking Perrier because we thought it, we, we were prosperous. And this is before you put the twist of lime or the twist of lemon in it. It was just Perrier. What is that? It's a fancy bottle of carbonated water. Highly carbonated. Because it's, it's a natural carbonation wherever they, they, they get it out of the springs in France. It's a natural spring that carbonates, and it is it's nasty. The twist of lime, you go, of course, then you got really fancy. You start putting a twist of lime in it, you know, and in. You know, and then they actually start putting it in the bottle. But I would drink it, you go, oh, that's, that's good. And, he, and of course, I'm thinking, son, I was drinking Perrier before Perrier was cool, you know. And uh, I stopped drinking it for a reason. And he likes it with strawberry in it. He, th- he thinks, and then I, I've tasted it. It's not bad, the, you know, the, the limes, you know. They're, they're much better than just straight up sparkling water. You know, and um, just it just is. But we thought we were cool. We were being prosperous. I mean, back when they had the satellite seminars coming out of uh, Texas, everybody had to have the new power tie the previous month. The guy who's running it had to wear his power tie the next month. You know, one woman walked by Brother Cope one day. They was, he was sitting up on the platform. He turned to her husband and said, that's what you need. You need some of them socks. We got so foolish with stuff. We got caught up with messages. We got caught up with having stuff. We got caught up with, we're going to give this amount of money, or we're going to get a hundredfold return, and I'm going to be supernaturally prosperous, you know, beyond my wildest dreams, that Robin Leach is coming to my house. 
from my testimony. Lifestyles of the Christian, rich and famous. You know, we all were dreaming of our yachts and our multi-million dollar uh, mansions and all this kind of stuff. Come on now. And in the process of time, because some of the things we were doing weren't working, but we kept saying they were working, we became deferred in the hope of our hearts to see the dream God placed in it come to pass. And we wake up one day, X number of years down the road, and we're looking and going, What have I done? What has happened? What have I accomplished? What about the dream in my heart? And we find ourselves void of an intimacy with God that we had at one time. Because we were so busy pursuing a message, or so busy pursuing a goal, that we forgot where we get that. And we, we preached a lot in those days. God will give you the desires of your heart. We were just, every, any, any whimsical thing that somebody came up with was a, was a desire. They could have it. And we had people getting other people's spouses. Believing for other people's vehicles. One student, Raymond, came up to Brother Hagen. Uh, actually, about the time I was out there. Came up to Brother Hagen. He had just, and, and the board members had given him a Ford Bronco. You know, for, for the ministry, they had given him a Ford Bronco. Now, you understand, it didn't happen his first year he was in ministry. It didn't, this, is, this is years down the road of being in the ministry, of being faithful, of walking to preach. Wearing his car out and had to sell it junk so he could, and had to, so he had started taking the bus to get to places to preach. Of being faithful to God during the, during the lean seasons. Now he gets, see, we, we, you, you see, you come in on the back end of everything, and all you see is the new car. Well, bless God, he's not a respected person. He's going to give me a new car. Glory to God, I got a new car in Jesus' name. But you weren't riding down the road with your tires until you had to drive at night because they'd blow out during the day because it was too hot. They were so bald. Hello. Drive home, see the kids for one night, okay, hit the road right back the next day. And drive up in the driveway and cut the car off and it wouldn't crank because they'd been out of gas for two hours. They had to, I just supernaturally kept the car going until they got home. So, anyway, he's got a Ford Bronco. He drives to school one day and gets out, and Raymond Studer walks by. Take care of my Ford Bronco. He said, What are you talking about? What well, the Bible says I can have what I say, and I believe that I received a Ford Bronco. Brother Hagen looked at him and said this. He said, Well, I've got something to do with it, and I got a word from the Lord. He told me to keep it. See, we get foolish. See, if you spent time in intimacy with God, God wouldn't give you the desire for somebody else's car. He'd give you the desire for your own. But you have to get somebody else's. Well, you never, never, never know, brother. The Lord might tell me, tell you to give me that. Coming like the Holy Grail the next week. I, I had, I saw this happen. Guy got him. A, now you got to understand. This is 1979. Yeah, 1980, early 1980, he got a, a cassette player with a single big speaker on it so he could listen to his teaching tapes. It, it was mono, and one speaker with no auto reverse. He had to turn the tape over. But it was a big speaker. It was like this big, you know, big speaker on it. And, and one, of our, one of the guys there said, well, you know, brother so-and-so, you, you never know. The Lord might tell you to give me that. And so the next week when all of us got together to pray and, you know, and all of our girlfriends and everything, we're all there to pray together and stuff. And uh, this guy comes walking out of his bedroom back into the living room like the Holy Grail to that person. He says, the Lord told me to give you this. No, he didn't. You did. The Lord didn't tell you to give him to give that to him. That person manipulated him. You see? And we got, we got so caught up in what we can have, what we say, we started just saying stupid stuff, making 
what we call confessions of faith that weren't even confessions of faith. They were just anything, you know, you got a goosebump, that's God. Had people confess stuff and say stuff to me. Well, what's this got to do with what you're talking about? When we get back into intimacy with God, he'll produce in your heart desires. And they don't have to be flaky. You don't have to be weird. You don't have to look like Ka in the Jungle Book as you talk about it. Trust in me, trust in me. Eyes just spinning. And you're not going to need to manipulate other Christians. Because your relationship with the Father and your intimacy with the Father, you'll walk in the garden of alone. alone. And he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own. Amen? And dreams are birthed. And, and let me say this. As you go back and you begin to rekindle and to reignite that intimacy with God, he will stir those dreams up he placed in there. Because he placed them for a reason. I'm not going to get anywhere near a finish today. He birthed those in you for a reason. The deposits of God are there not just so you can be blessed. Let me say, yes, God wants to bless you, but stop seeing the end of all of you being blessed. Remember what God told Abraham. And in thee shall all nations be blessed. The blessing on Abraham was for the purpose of being a blessing. Do not lose sight of the fact that you are in the hands of God as a tool to advance his kingdom, which is his heart. Well, I got to be blessed to be blessing. I get it. But that's a charismatic cop-out for not being intimate with God and walking his plan. We're pursuing having all kinds of stuff under the guise that by having it, I can then be a blessing. And what usually happens is when you get there, you're not a blessing because you hoard it all up. And I know some of you are thinking, well, I ain't never had, I ain't never been in that place. I, I, I know. And that's, that, that's the frustration is some people who never got there who want to be and some people who are there who don't care to be. They're not really in it for, you know. And we've said this before. You can have a prosperity seminar and 4,000 charismatics will show up. You can be intimate with God's seminar and they won't, you can't find them. We can't locate them because they're too busy getting all that money. Hello. Had somebody come to me one time, Amway. I'm just going to tell you, it was just flat out Amway. And they use God as a, as, a, as a manipulation tool right and left. I, I'm sorry if you're in, I don't care. I've seen too many of your people do it. I've seen too many double diamonds come to pastors of big churches, and when they don't woo them into the organization, they never talk to them again. They're taking them to golf, they're bringing them to their house, or having them at dinner because they want that whole church in their, their uplink or their downlink. This makes you. This is God's method of prosperity. <laughs> I, I can't find any way in the Bible. <laughs> a number of years ago, they had this card come out on a telemarketing card. And everybody in, in, in a certain circle got into this thing. And people were making all this money going up the line. And finally, they finally found out it was, a, it was an illegal marketing scheme. And the guys went to prison. And I had people pulling me off the side. This is God's method of prosperity. No, it's not. No, it's not. The wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. And in that particular one, on the top 11% broke even or made money. So I always said this. I, I, I tell people, well, okay, so what you're telling me is that 89% of the people that get involved with me in this particular card had to be sinners. Because the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, and this is God's means, means of transferring the wealth of the sinner to the just, then, and only 11%, the top 11 out of 100, make or break even. 
then the other 89 have to be sinners. There's no way around it. You can't have it, you can't have it both ways. We got 89 people who are unbelievers who are going to move up. No, 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 no. That's not what you said. And so we get caught, we hear a message, and Satan will use things to defer us. He'll get us caught up with this. Go stuff all the money in the preacher's pocket because we got to, you know, we got to give up. And we're not remembering the widows and the, and the orphans. Hello? We got to make sure the men of God drive around in multi million dollar cars or, you know, $250,000 cars. And, you know, when they come into your church, they can't rent a, you know, an economy. They have to have a luxury car. Have to have two hotel rooms, one for them, one for their family. Kind of airline tickets for the entire crowd. We get we, we and we get so caught up with this image of prosperity, and people we want the image, and have completely forgone the intimacy with the one who prospers. We're like the rich, snot-nosed brat kids of wealthy people who live off the backs of the work of their parents or their grandparents and the estate trust, no investment. And that is what we've done in the church. And so this thing has taken so many people and deferred their dreams. Long no dream the dream. God placed in their heart. If I get any more enthusiasm out of you this morning, I don't know what I'm going to do. We're going to rename our church is what we're going to do. We'll become the first church of the frozen chosen of Greenville. I'm messing with you. This is not an excite. This is not to be excited. This is a heart searcher. What dreams are in your heart you've let go? That have become dormant and crusted over, just sitting there, and you're not doing anything about getting them up. As a matter of fact, you know, how many ever heard the term, let the dead dog lie? Huh? Dog lie. Well, I heard I, where, we, where we were letting the dead dog lie. I don't know why they said dead dog, but that's let the sleeping dog lie. You don't want to mess with him if he's sleeping. Whatever it is you use. We're, we're from Eastern Carolina. We got here first, so we're right. That's what Brother Hay used to say all the time. You say something, he'd go, that's a good old Texas colloquial expression. I thought, we say that in North Carolina, and we were here first. So it's a North Carolina expression. And Texas claims everything, you know? I think everything was Texas you know, first. Now some North Carolina folks went out there and took it over there with them. God is calling us. There's an old song that Copeland used to have on his In His Presence album. This is a 1978 album. I would remind you to stir up the gift. Rekindle the flame, fanning the fire. It's the fire burning in our heart. Amen? God, it's, fire, it's the God-given desire. Amen? We need to have the fire rekindled. Not about how we can get rich. Not about how much we can obtain in life. But about our fellowship and our relationship with the Father. So that our Christianity is not about, come to our church, you'll learn how you can have all you want. You can learn how to live in fellowship with the heart, in, in, in fellowship and relationship with God and know his heart. To know even as I am known. To know him. Amen. Thanks for
Think of that old Bobby Benton song. To know, know, know you is to love, love, love you. And I do, I do, I do. Some of you may not listen to Bobby Benton. I thought Bobby Benton was cool. The Polish lovester. You know? Hallelujah. Roses are red, violets are blue. Amen? Roses are red, my love. Oh, I'm sorry. I used to have Best of Bobby Benton, eight-track tape. Yeah. In it, double track. I could listen to two of the songs at the same time. You can't do that with digital, but you sure could do it with an eight-track. Now, you want to hear something funny? Pastor Hagen has an eight-track. A refurbed eight-track. Yeah. And eight-tracks, just because he likes to have the cool thing. I'm thinking, that's cool. I'd like to have one, too. Maybe find some eight-tracks that don't double-track. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you just need a tube amp and really make it sound good. Yeah. Let's rekindle. Let's go into the year not looking for, you know. And listen, there's nothing wrong with believing God for stuff, but I'm going to tell you, if we don't get this back, all that stuff you're confessing, all the stuff you're saying just ain't going to work. It's going to have to be about you and the Lord. Walking with him. You know this. You get kids. If you got kids and they want to go off and do their own thing and they're not, you know, whatever, you love them. But you're not, you're not quite as uh, antsy to just go do all kinds of stuff for them when they're, you know, they won't even talk to you. They show up when they need some money. Hello. It's a whole lot easier to give stuff when they just, they're, they love you and they show they love you with you. Amen? I don't have any kids like that. Again, they don't show up. Jesse shows up when she needs food, but anyway. I'm just messing with you, honey. She does not. Okay? Cap does. Ooh. He, he's out of the room, can't defend himself, and just throws him under the bus. You just got thrown under the bus, Cap, by your wife. But we, we, know, we know that it's, it's you know, in, in life, when we know people love us and care for us, it's easier to take, to help and to do. And it's not that God withholds. It's just, it's, it's better all the way around when, when you're intimate with him. Instead of just showing up with your sugar daddy visit, what can I get out of you this week? Amen? Wow. Is it really that time? Well, thank y'all for being with us this morning. I didn't really know how this was going. It's, it's a soaker. Gwen says it's a soaker. It's got to soak in. Hallelujah. Amen. Let it, in. Let it get down in your heart. Go into 2018. We're going to talk more about that this week. We're going to talk about your dream, your vision, your destiny next week. We're going to maybe get past it because this is the foundation. If we don't address this and get this right, just like your new res- resolution won't mean a thing if you don't make some changes. I'm going to lose weight in 2018. If you don't start eating different, you ain't going to lose no weight. Because for some of us, you can't exercise enough to get rid of it eating the way you do. Hello? I mean, you're going out running five miles and you got one of those hats on that got the straws on it with, with two liter bottles on it. <laughs> I need the sugar so I can run. Uh-huh. You can, you can say I'm going to lose weight all you want to. If you don't make some changes, you're not going to lose weight. Hello? Lay's potato chips for ranch dressing and a two liter sit inside your, your nightstand is not how you're going to lose it. it. May sound good. You know? One, one of the people used to go to our church, uh, she, uh, she, used to, she was addicted to M&M's. I think she still is. And she'd keep the two pound bags hidden beside her bed. 
She, her husband got on her about it. She wouldn't let him. She hit him, and she'd be eating m ms all the time. Addicted. Amen. So just in the natural, you have to have a lifestyle change to have changes, to reach goals. You're going to have to have spiritual changes. See your desires burn again. Stop asking why didn't it happen and do something about it. Amen? Father, we thank you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this direction. Thank you for the challenge. We know that your heart is for us to, to know you even as we are known. To be in your presence, to be intimate with you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand up. Thank you for joining us today on Facebook Live. We appreciate you having you with us. Trust that this has ministered to you. Until uh, we see you again, remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. Have a great uh, night tonight. Uh, I'm not going to be watching the ball drop. Hello? Amen? I'll be watching the back of my eyelids. All right.